What's up guys, Buzz here back again with another match review that sadly I got the prediction correct, but just the opposite teams. AC Milan 2, enter 1. And where do we begin, boy? <laughs> Didn't see this coming. Well, actually I kind of did see it coming defensively, but the chances we created in the second half, wow. Alexander Kolarov in the back. Well, first off, must be stated, a back three doesn't work. And a lot of people have stated this, that it doesn't make sense. A back three does not work if you have wing backs. Or, in this case, essentially a, a left uh, base. Uh, don't even know how to say it. If you have full backs, essentially, basically playing as center backs, it doesn't work. And you should honestly go for the tools that will best help you succeed in the formation you're trying to go for. Uh, that's something I had said a couple months back, uh, or actually probably two months back, when we were in lockdown and games were being played and during the Europa League, when uh, Milan Skriniar wasn't getting game time, or when Godin wasn't getting game time. Find the players that fit uh, your formation or style of play. Because... Uh, yeah, trying to use wing backs as center backs that doesn't really work. Uh, I mean, as well as with COVID and the fact we lost a bunch of players, the chances we created, we should have at least drawn that match. If not, maybe possibly have won it. But yeah, we let Godin go so we can bring in Alexander Kolarov, who, yeah, he's a left side, left side, left footed player, but defensively he's just been not good. He's not good in the center back role. And Milan Skriniar wasn't available. So the only recognized center back we actually had was Stefan De Bruy in the back three. And Antonio Conte decided to go to 3 4 1 2, which is exactly the prediction or lineup I would have gone for. Except he decided to use a Barella and not start Christian Eriksen, which even there leaves bigger questions. So, but. Uh, this loss is majority on Antonio Conte. A little bit on the players, especially Lukaku trying to back heel it towards the end of the match. I don't know why he would even try to do that, but I mean, I guess make an attempt on goal. But the chances that we had, multiple from Lukaku, the one from Hakimi. Oh, man. But I did say Zlatan Ibrahimovic would come in and be a danger to us. And Rafael Leno as well. Alexander Kolarov brings him down for a penalty. Zlatan slots it away. Or Zlatan misses and then slots up the follow-up. And then Rafael Leno just one, two passes our defense. Or just bypasses our defense and no one's marking tight enough on Zlatan. And he's just slots it. 2-0 in the first 20 minutes. And I'm thinking, Wow. Either we're about to make a comeback, or this is going to get pretty bad. Because in the first half, they had a lot of chances. In the second half, uh, they took off Rafael Leno and went more defensively. And this is when Antonio Conte decided to bring on Christian Eriksen and Alexis Sanchez. And basically keep on Lukaku and... Uh, keep on Lukaku and Lontado to just try and go for it. But honestly, uh, Brozovic was very not at the races today. Vidal basically did what he could, but shockingly, defensively horrendous, offensively wasteful with the chances that we had. And the ref, don't get me started on the ref, my god. Some of the decisions, and controversial decisions, I don't even want to get into. But for me, this is just not a match I really expected. But man, where to begin? Because one issue had was Conte and his substitutions. The 3 4 1 2. Christian Eriksen's brought in. You basically change your fundamental fundamental formation of a 3 4 or 3 5 2 to fit Christian Eriksen, but you don't start him. He hasn't started, I think, a game this season. He's mainly been a super sub. Which, usually he's a player who feels the game out, tries to get a feel of things. 
likes to get his groove in, but you're trying to bring him on when everything's going wrong or when you're needing something. Again, we were out. So we were without Sensi, the red card. We were without Bastoni, Scrinier, and uh, Galliadini, uh, as well as Ashley Young, Gradu, through uh, Corona. But still, the team and the way the team played should have at least gotten a draw. Because Milan, this Milan team literally came for it in the first half. In the second half, basically couldn't do much. Although the battle between Hakimi and Theo Hernandez was pretty funny and pretty good. Two former uh, Madrid fullbacks basically going at it on the flanks. <laughs> but yeah, man. Antonio Conte really dropped the ball on this one. But I mean, you're supposed to basically make do with the... Uh, make do with the make do with what you're given uh, i was watching uh right before this i was actually watching uh iftv italian football tvs uh the last five minutes of their live stream to see what they had to say about this and one of their correspondents peter had said with the players you have available you should at least change the formation to suit what you have we have alexander kolarov who is not a center back who's a fullback more or less just shifted to a back four Hakimi on the right, Alexander Karov on the left. Uh, you have Stefan De Vrij. I actually looked at the bench too. We had Alexis Sanchez, Christian Eriksen, Ranocchia, or Roshin, Ranocchia, Fideli, a backup uh, striker, and some other midfielders that we don't really use. But even then, you could have brought in Ranocchia, Stefan De Vrij, a back four. Just make it work with what you have and the tools available to you because. Hell, and we, hell, we even had Paris said, oh, could have gone for a 4-3-3. Maybe just shift, uh, maybe you'll probably have to drop Montaro, because Montaro, for as much as, like, he tried, he kind of didn't do much. He might as well have probably just kept him on the bench as another option if you wanted to switch up. Go for a 4-1-2-1-2, or whatever. But, yeah, it's, this, this formation really angered me, because going forward... This is going to be an issue that it needs to get solved. And I don't think bringing in Matteo Darmian. Oh, Mateo, uh, I forgot. Darmian was on the bench as well. Yeah, but bringing in Matteo Darmian and Alexander Karov, two f basically wingback, fullbacks, in the place of when we just could have let Godin go and didn't bring in at least a backup center back, is going to cause a lot of issues and problems. <sighs> going forward, because if Skrinier gets injured, we bring in Dan Daniele D'Ambrosio. Bastoni gets injured, who do we bring in? Alexander Kolarov. And to be fair, so far, this is second match starting, and he hasn't done pretty much good or enough to impress like most Inter fans. Defensively, here in the first game against Florentina, he got exposed drastically. This game, a lot of Inter fans are getting really angry. So the only difference between at least the Florentina game is the fact we didn't have uh, Milan Skriniar was out through injury and uh, Stefan De Vrij was out through red card. So we had Bastoni in the middle. And yeah, you can basically tell we drastically missed uh, Bastoni and Skriniar in the back. But still, out, I mean, defensively, yes, there were issues. But offensively, though, the chances we had, we should have at least buried it away and made it to... At least a draw from the chances, the Lukaku's chances that he had. Hakimi's missed header. Oh, man. But this one, I mean, again, Scudetto or bust this season. If he doesn't get the Scudetto, who knows? Uh, my opinion, hopefully we can move forward. Uh, I know this week we probably took on Borussia Mönchengladbach. I'll, I won't be able to watch the game. As here in the U.S., it's not available, not on TNT or even on the Spanish channels. You have to buy it on Bleacher Report, which I'm not going to do. I'll just catch the highlights and see how it goes. But uh, I'll be here for the next game we play in the following week. And hopefully, or Bastoni's going to come back and Raja Nagolan's going to come back as well. But hopefully the next match we actually are able to build some momentum and get this result in the past of us in our mind. 
and maybe get some revenge on Milan in the second half. <laughs> second half of the season. So, but Milan, credit to Milan, fully deserved it. Uh, I didn't take anything away. The ref was horrendous. <laughs> ref was an absolute joke. Conte, the way he read the game, should have been way better for the amount of money that he's on. It should have been way better. For the fact that essentially you begged and wanted these players in, you wanted experience in the back, you should manage your experience that you brought in way better. And uh, hopefully uh, we can kick on to the next game. I'll be here to give you guys another match review for the next match you play in the Serie A this upcoming weekend after our Champions League match against Borussia Mönchengladbach. And, uh, yeah, leave me you guys' thoughts below. Who, do, Not even who, who do you think is at fault, personally. I think it's 80% Conte for the way he set up in-game management. The fact that essentially you kind of didn't see the whole call up thing. Oh, man. You know, I've even seen people say, might as well go ahead and just drop Vidal in. At least, more or less, it'd be a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, give me your thoughts below. Who do you, oof, what do you make of the match? Do you think you honestly saw a draw? I saw this 2-1 enter. It went 2-1 AC Milan winning it. I was being hell optimistic. Now I got to hold my L. So uh, shout out to my friend Milano Miguel. Uh, congrats on the win. I know you're happy. And uh, credit to Milan and Pioli. A lot of people thought Pioli was going to, things were going to get bad, but things seem to be on track for him. Hopefully here at Inter, we can get things on track and actually fix things and actually not uh, drop points and have a season where we're questioning, have we come from behind? Why did we drop points? Why did we drop off in the second half? Oh. <sighs> Ay, 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 this team is going to give me a headache. <laughs> leave your thoughts and comments below. Uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Buzz, and I'll catch you guys on the next Serie A review. Ciao, ciao.